Forgive me. Oh! <laughs> we reach. Good day, y'all. <laughs> man, how you doing, sir? Good, man. You know, it's 5.30 in the morning here, man. Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you an early bird? Um, yeah, from about six. Yeah. So this is like early, early bird. You, know? you need a coffee. You definitely need a coffee. I'm, I'm having a rubosh. I'm having a rubosh. Rubosh or rubosh or whatever people call it. People call it by different names. But it's a good pick-me-up. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> how's, um... I have to ask you again. Oh, by the way, just so you all know, uh, yeah, Eddie is far away from everybody right now. Um, Eddie is residing in Australia. What's the time difference? It's about 10 hours, um, right? Um, well, it's Thursday. It's Friday morning here. It's Friday it's 5 morning. Friday morning. It's 5 so when it, Friday morning. So you're a guy that we can get deep with. And, and any time we have to do that, we have to do some compromise, right? On the time. <laughs> because we got you on the 25th. And we will be doing that at 9, over here, 9 a.m. Yeah. 9 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how's, 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 how's lockdown keeping you so far, though? Um, it hasn't been too bad. Um, where I am, um, um, we're not in the city. We're, th we're an hour from Sydney. So we're more in the burbs. So um, we can move around. Still, when I say move around, go to where you're going, go home. You know what I mean? But mm. you'll see people out and they're exercising. You'll see people out walking with their kids. And, you know, that. but the street, the roads are still clear. So everyone's kind of observing the lockdown. Yeah. You know, everyone's observing the lockdown and just, um, um, yeah, getting on with it. You know, you have to be in your house and create a normal out of the new normal, you know, um, and, and see what. <laughs> and see, see how you make it. You know, it's funny. Um, yesterday, I went out. No, two days ago. I went out because we live, our garden is on the back of a park. Mm -hmm. We're blessed like that. Um, Jamaican spicy cuisine. I mean, you're waving. What are you saying? I don't know who you are, but nice to have you. Um, we're on the back of a park, and I look out my window, and two things are happening. A cricket match and a football match. <laughs> Real. So I went over there. I said, no, I know I'm looking at my window. I'm not seeing it. I went over there and it's happening. The police come in. <clears throat> the park ranger comes in. They tell people to break it up. They say, yeah. And literally 60 seconds later, they're back. The police walk through the park and walk out. Um... England is um, a funny place right now. Listen, you know, the whole world is a funny place right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We never knew, we never knew that we were so deeply wired. Um, yeah. We never knew that it was so deeply wired into us to be connected with other human beings. Yeah. We, we just, we didn't know. COVID, COVID just reminded us. Yeah, that that we cannot survive without being connected to other human beings. No. Like literally, you know, literally, you know. So, uh, so we'll see. <coughs> we'll see. We'll see how we do with it. Yeah, we'll see how the rest of it goes, man. <laughs> um, 
there's, there's, there's some interesting topics I wanted to cover tonight. Um, you're the man to do it with. By the so. way, <laughs> by, by the way, um, Eddie, you wrote a book. Uh, living from here, yeah. Yeah, man. Can can we see it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the, the book? Writing's about? back to front. But yes. Back back. Copy with living the writing's back to front, but yeah, that's the book. Yeah, that's the book. Hmm. That's my second offering. My first offering was this book here called The Book of Testosteronomy. <laughs> called The Book of Testosteronomy. But yeah. What one is that about? What's that about? That book? The Book of Testosteronomy is a book of what I call manisms. So they're just like quotes. Some of them wise, some of them otherwise. Um, two of them, they're all, the, they're all mine. You know what I mean? Um, two are from my parents and then the rest are for me. So my dad's one was stand your ground, fight your battles like a man. Um, and then I wrote a chapter in my book about that, about having to come to terms with receiving advice like that from a man who never stood his ground or fight his battles for or fought any battles for us. Um, um, and, and then my mum's one used to be always to us as boys. Um, sex doesn't bring love, love brings sex. And we was like, what? You know? Um, well, that might be a good place to start today, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then the rest, of, some of it is foolishness. Like, um, 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 you know, um, a pedicure may be your feet's only hope um, for men. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, you got me looking at my toes right now. <laughs> hey, listen, man. I stabbed up my wife with one of my big toenails the other night, man. I rolled over and kind of kicked her. She, oh. I was like, bro, I'm not that bad boy. I'm just checking if you're alive. Don't watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut that bad boy. <laughs> my wife just bleeding to death in the bed, man. Hey, listen. Back in the day, I could cut my toes with a nail clip. No longer. You need like, you need like with a metal thing now, innit, man? Bro, the pliers. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need a whole other thing now, man. You know them thing you cut where you do gardening with. You know? Yeah. I looked at I used to look at my dad and think, man, do you have to get like that? <laughs> Here I am. Here yeah, I am. Serious, my toes will fire special scissors. Yeah. You look at your parents and I ain't never gonna have toenails never. like that, man. Never. I've got them same toenails, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know. Same toenails, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> So, tell us how your bond's doing. I'm going to ask you a question in a sec. All right, then. Go on. <laughs> tell us how your bond's doing first. Yvonne, Yvonne is good. Yvonne is good. She was, she's teaching. Yesterday, she did six hours of teaching online. College is back. You know, she's many things. Amongst them, an educator, you know, so... She's teaching these biology students, these science students. She teaches in the science faculty at Avondale University. And um, so she was like, yeah, repeated the same class six times. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Um, for, for students, because they're such big classes. Mm. Got them on Zoom. And she's just sitting in her space teaching. You know, but she's doing good, you know, Ria. Ria's enjoying her best life, you know, sleeping, sleep, literally sleeping all day. How old is um, she? Getting up. She's good. She's good. How, how, how old is she? Oh, how old is she? She's 16 now. You believe it? She turned 16. Same age as Char. Yeah. You know what I mean? She turned 16 and, <clears throat> you know, she's doing good. She's in year 11. She's settled. You know, she, she's embraced her superpower, which is everything, you know. She was compartmentalizing. Well, you know, she didn't know that she could be beautiful and and militant and um, a warrior and intelligent and you know 
she thought it was either or. I'm like, nah, you can actually be all of it at the same time. That one doesn't have to, one doesn't have to be in dichotomy with the other. You know, it, it, you don't have to compete with with your brilliance. You can't be like. And so, like, I think around about year 10, it kind of clicked in her head, like, actually, yeah, I can be all of it at the same time. I can be all of it at the same time. And so she's kind of settled in to that skin now. And she's good. She's doing good. Yeah, 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 10. Now she's in year 11. Mm, she's good. She's good. <laughs> question. Mm. In fact, question context. Um, this... Mm. The last three weeks has been enlightening. We've spoken to a lot of people. We've had a lot of questions. Um, I think you are the most experienced person we would have had. Yeah, that's a compliment, man, not sure. Um, <laughs> all day, that's a compliment. Um, you're the most experienced person. And you know what? Every age group or every level of experience has a different type of testimony. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as we are men talking, I want to know from you what role Christ plays in your relationship from Eddie to them, from Eddie to her, from Eddie to Yvonne. What, what is the relevance of Christ in, in, in all of that? Um. You know, I, I got that saying. Um, if I, you, you know, Yvonne has loved me way past my love by day. Like seriously, no, no, two weeks is our twenty seventh year. I mean, really, around about year fifteen, I think that was it. <laughs> that 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 was it. And um, I know that if I wasn't if I wasn't a follower of Christ and if I wasn't trusting um, the heart that he said he's, he had given me, um, I would have, I would have gone, you know, I would have gone, I would have gone. Um, so I feel like, because that's kind of wired into my DNA. What's wired into my DNA? Doing love by walking doing love at a distance you know that, that was one of the things I had to come to terms with with what my dad said to me you know stand your ground fight your battles like a man and he said it at our engagement party now my dad left when I was five years old never came back into the marital home again so my dad stayed at the periphery of our lives so when he said that at that family engagement you know I was like you know if, you know Yvonne's family was there all my family was there you know, we had that, it was a pre-wedding, sorry, pre-wedding party, just brought, you know, the house of Hippolyte and the house of Somerville together. And when my dad said that, I was like, yeah, dad, I will. Okay, I will. But in my mind was like, I was like, what, like you did for me? Chop on you, man, who's listening to you and your foolishness? Obviously, I can't disrespect my dad like that in front of people. But in my mind, I was like, well, chop on you, man. And, um, and then year 15 happened in our marriage. And we just hit that kind of road of going down the road of indifference. Life had just kind of kicked in in a bad way. We was going through a lot of pressure on all, kind, on all sides. We was going through just pressure. And my dad's way was to just absent himself. And I wasn't going to physically absent myself, you know, because I had to keep up the facade of being a pastor, being a leader, and all of that. You know what I mean? I, right. I wasn't going to physically absent myself. But emotionally and mentally, I was absenting myself. And I was going down the road of indifference. And it was literally, you yeah. see, you, making me, you know me, I cried for nothing. Come on. It was literally in year 15 that I heard the words of my dad, stand your ground or fight your battles like a man. And then I realized what my dad was saying to me. And he was saying, it's wired into your DNA to walk. <laughs> you love by walking. You need to stand your ground and fight your battles like a man. 
you need to stand your ground. And, um, and I knew I didn't have the heart to do that. And that's when all the theory stuff that I've been preaching to people really kicked into my spirit. And, and I had to ask Jesus, all right, you need to renew my heart. You need to give me a new heart. You, yeah. Otherwise, I don't know how to do this. And, and for me, that's when, that's when everything became a reality. That's when love became a reality. That's when marriage became a really deeper reality. And that's when faith became a deeper reality because <clears throat> I found myself in that space of having to trust that Jesus could do that. And he did that, you know, having to, having to be vulnerable enough to um you know until death to us part isn't always physical death sometimes it's just you know sometimes it can be just the emotional death of love um and just kind of figuring out how we revive that and so yeah i feel like i wouldn't have made it here i wouldn't have made it to 27 I definitely wouldn't have made it to 27 if it hadn't have been for my ability um, to trust and, and, and what I know is God's ability and God's reality to actually renew my heart. Let me ask you this. So, yeah, I mean, I, let, let, let me know. Jesus is everything. Huh? I want to ask you a question. Um, mm -hmm. We're, we're going to get back to the, to the main question, but you, you raised mm -hmm. something that was raised the other night. Um, a few nights ago. Um, and I'm asking you this question, and I'm asking myself this question as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, you've been preaching, as far as I can remember, uh, I, spoke to you, <laughs> I spoke to you yesterday, right? Um, you've been preaching since I was about 14. Mm. <laughs> That's a little while now, right? Mm -hmm. I used to listen to you, and I was like, yeah. This guy's got the spirit. This guy's got the anointing. Whatever you want to call it. Um, and it, it always fascinates me how people preach and teach. And the very thing that they're preaching and teaching, they haven't necessarily got. When you said to me, you know, year 15, what was missing up until that point. It's not about, you know, I'm looking at Eddie. What was, what, what did you not get? Why did you just walk through year 15? Why does year 15, it's not that it's the year, but where were your tools? I think the saying. tools were there. I feel like the tools were there, but I don't feel like life had kicked in hard enough. <laughs> mm. I don't feel, you know, we got married the first four years. We went off to Jamaica. We was at university together. It was that beautiful whirlwind, or you know what I mean, in and out of Jamaica. And we're just young, and we got we got our six year plan. Two of us are gonna go study. You know, I do my degree, she does her degree. We enjoy Jamaica. We come back. I do my master. She does her master. She goes back to work. I did. You know, so we're just in the kind of flow. We're in the ebb and flow of that. You know what I mean? We want to start a family, but we ain't yet. But boy, you know what I mean? We're we we we're, we're putting the work in all the way up to that six years, you know, into six years, into year six, finished the master's, gone straight into work. You know, I was yeah. fortunate enough to get picked up straight out of seminary. And so I don't feel like anything was missing. Okay. I feel like life, had, life hadn't really kicked in hard, you yeah. know, and, and, and somewhere along the line in, in chasing all the things we were chasing, somewhere along the line, we kind of did this we were chasing them but we weren't chasing them like this yeah. we were chasing them like this now to a certain degree you have to chase it like that you know what I mean because you both have to be responsible for the goals you're chasing mm -hmm. but I feel like so in that space of standing and you have to be responsible for what you're doing you, you travel like that but you still travel like that like this yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean and somewhere along the line we missed the this yeah. and and, and I feel like that's what kicked in. And it, and it kind of literally caught us both by surprise. We're like, damn, we're here. And how did we get here? Yeah. You know what I mean? And we had to really kind of do the work to, you know, 
up while traveling like this to get back to traveling like this you know yeah. you know the opposite of love is and hate the opposite of love is indifference and that's the road we started to travel down you know we started traveling down the road of indifference and that that road there boy describe indifference define it if i'm here i'm here if i'm not here i'm not here right now i'm in a business let's let's just get on with life <laughs> you know what i mean you know do you know the thing about that is that is that it's so subtle yeah. it's not blatant it's not it's, like it's, it's, it's almost like racist microaggressions you know what i mean um, and, yeah. and like yeah you don't you know you don't realize how much it actually chips away at everything you know to be love yeah. and and you know it's supposed to hold you together in love mm. um at least with the hate you're cussing each other out and you know because all hate is is just love it's it's just dysfunctional love you know what yeah. i mean yes but, like, like you know. yeah and and you see the thing is we're slick yeah and we're very private as a couple so we could argue hard hard you know what i mean or be in that space where we're not even talking on our way to church, get out the car and walk hand in hand into church because Whoa. you ain't about to know our business. Whoa. Literally, don't play with us, man. And literally walk hand in hand into church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you Whoa. ain't about to know our business because you can't help us anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... um, um yeah yeah we we year 15 was a was a you know but it was coming to terms with that and 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 <laughs> you know mm. christ i'm telling you so for me that's where christ that's where this whole thing of faith you know i, I mean sure faith that don't work faith that don't work in in the marketplace is just information it's just useless information Okay. So faith that don't work in the marketplace of life is just useless information. Um, and so, you know, I suppose that's what actually shapes my preaching as well. You know, um, I think that's what shapes my preaching. I, I don't, you know, you know, we're, we're Adventists. So we're from that background. When we started Kennington, and people used to see the, the people that used to come to Kennington and how they used to look and how they used to dress. And I used to have concerned members from my other churches and concerned pastors, you know, why you don't preach about how they're looking and how they're dressing and how they're... I'm just like, man, that's a waste of 45 minutes in the pulpit, man. People already coming to church beat up. What, you want me to stand up for the next 45 minutes and send them home worse, fe feeling worse than they, when they came in? Like, no, nah, man. You know, and I think that's where my whole mantra, preach life and the people will live. Just yeah. preach life and the people will live. And um, and I think that's where I've, I've really began to understand that. You know, so, I mean, I didn't preach. I said, no, man, don't do most wasteful things. There's too much good stuff in in faith, in, in the Gospels, in, in the biblical stories. There's just too much depth for you to preach about the shallow thing about, you know, about, you know, preach about the shallow things like what people wear in and how they look. Come on, come on, man. If their mirror can't inform them when they leave the house, then I, I ain't I ain't the police to do that. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I ain't the police to do that, you know. Just but you know what? It, it, live. In my opinion, you were the first, as far as I could see anyway. Uh, we came to your church uh, for a few years. Um, mm. And we've gone back. And then we've left again, but yeah, no, um, like full we, circle. <laughs> yeah, many circles, bro. Um, you were the first. That, that was a revolution in our denomination to have a church that didn't worry about those things, to didn't worry about appearance. <laughs> and um, I'm a man. I'm 43 now, so mm. I came up in a time when the church I've been to was just it was just conservative all the way. Oh, it was man. all about appearance. Was, all of us did. All of us did. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you, you changed it. Um, you, you went, you went road <laughs> on the church. Um, well, the thing is, it was road. It was road that you know that really made up our numbers. It was road that really that that's where God 
I, you know, that's where God stationed our, our ministry. Yeah. And so we just, we just stayed in the space that he was working in, you know. Our thing was, all right, where do you want us to work? And I was fortunate to have a brilliant senior pastor in that space, Dr. E.L. Henry. He was already yeah. retired. He, they brought him out of retirement to Pastor Brixton. And I became his intern. But he was my senior. He was my head of department in Jamaica. He was the head of theology in Jamaica. And so I was having a, I was in a dream. Anyway, he... In he baptized me. In, huh? He baptized me. It, really? Yeah. Eric Henry or Leopold Henry? The older one, right? Uh, the, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his daughter, he's got a daughter um, named Carla. No, no, no. That's Eric Different Henry. Different one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about Leopold Henry. E.L. Henry. You know what I mean? And um, but he baptized me as well when I came back into the church at 25. So we were baptized by the same person. You know what I mean? And, um, and he, he said, we're starting a church plant. They were starting, um, I think, like, seven different projects at Brixton that year. And one of them was a church plan. And he was the one that selected the leadership team. And then he put me in charge. And these were his exact words. I do not want this sound, this church, to look, sound, or feel anything like the mother church. I do not want it to look, sound, or feel anything like the mother church going in there and do something new. So he literally wrote us a blank check. I was like, brother, you don't need to tell me that twice. And he was wise enough. He was wise enough. Even at time, I remember one time we were running a project, running this ministry, and he said, "Boy, if that was me, I wouldn't do that, you know. He said, but I can see that it works. He said, so just keep on doing it. And that was the kind of leadership that we had, you know. That was the kind of leadership. And then we had a president in Don McFarlane, who was the president of the conference at the time. Man, he loved, he loved us, you know what I mean? Protected us. I mean, literally put a fence of protection around us. And so, yeah, so it, it was, you know, it, they made it easier. I mean, we took our knocks. I mean, we took our knocks in big ways, but they made it easier for us to, to do what we were doing and, and to do it in a protected environment, as it were. And plus, we did business anyway. You remember Kenneth and back in that day. Yeah, we'd be just, we're going to do what we're doing. You know, call the police. <laughs> you know I mean? Don't even call an elder. Call the police, man. You know what I mean? So it was good. What's, what's your evolution in terms of Christ's impression on you? Um, I'm living in a... I'm living in a greater space of awareness of, I've always had it, but I think greater space aware, of awareness about the responsibility that I have for the influence that God has given me. I don't have power. None of us have power, but the power that we all have in this, in this community of faith is influence. You know what I mean? And um, I'm, I'm beginning to be much more aware of you know the responsibility of my influence um much more aware of in a deeper way of my continued flaws you know at 54 55 in a couple of weeks and learning to live in a deeper sense of remembering that my shit stinks and um and will continue to stink. So be humble about your humanity, and and um, and use and use the influence of that in all the spaces that you are. You are. Um, I'm learning to. I hope I'm learning to love better. Um, to be, to be a lot more present with my love. Um, for my wife and for my daughter, um, you know, love is an ongoing journey. It's an ongo it's a, it's a, it's a class you never graduate from. It's a class never. you never graduate from. 
you, know, you, you may drop out of college, but you never, you know, but no. if you're in it, you never graduate from it. Um, yeah. Yeah. But so I'm learning, I'm figuring out what that looks like. Um, not making, trying not to make excuses for, um, for any of it, you know, try not to make excuses for any of it. Um, yeah, the rest I'm kind of working out as I go. <laughs> the, rest, the rest I'm working out. The rest I'm working out as I go. For me, I I see uh, I see the evolution, and sometimes I, I I find some of it hard to accept because it's against what I actually mm -hmm. am. Mm -hmm. Naturally, I'm naturally. I think as most humans are, but speaking for myself, naturally. Mm -hmm. I think I've got it right. I think I know what I'm doing. Are you still there, bro? Yeah, you're still there. And naturally, my growth is less about what I can get and more about what I can give. I'm finding more peace. But although I've been practicing it for a while, it's not fully a part of me. Sometimes I'm just me, which is not always the best person to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And growth is that I recognize. I think God is, you know, you know, when you learn a lesson, you live it. But when you recognize, it's just the information in front of you. Mm -hmm. And God has shown me this is what you need to be. And I am no, I am not. I can honestly say, I I haven't embraced everything. But I'm not going to deny it. Mm -hmm. In, uh, which is a difference from before when I thought I knew what it was about. I thought I knew what I had to do. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we love God and we grow in what God wants for us the same way and we grow in what, you know, what it means to be in this space with, with, the, with the person that we're with. You know, one of the things that men struggle with is giving their heart in a space of vulnerability because That's they're afraid that if they give that heart the hands that are holding that heart aren't going to be safe hands yeah. you know what I mean and, and because it's wired into us as humans not as men it's yeah. wired into us as humans you know what I mean to be in control and, um, and I think so we find ourselves on a kind of roller coaster of yeah I'm, I'm I'm surrendered in this space. Yeah. I'm growing yeah. in this space. Shall yeah. let me pull it back. Yeah. Let me, you know. And we do the same thing with love. We do the same thing with love. Um, and and I think that that's just a natural progression. But if you can be, you know, if 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 you if you can be confident in the person who has your heart, then you can just be confident in the journey, as difficult as it may be, that you're going in. You mm. can be confident, you know what I mean, of the process that it mm. takes to love deeper. I believe that you love down deeper in order to grow up stronger. You know what I mean? That's my philosophy. You know, we go down deeper in order to grow up stronger. We have to reach down deeper in order to grow up stronger. So, yeah. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the impact though? I think the impact is that we realize that for me, the real the impact is to realize that I'm I'm a stronger man. I'm a stronger man. I'm a better human. You know what I mean? The impact is that I feel like when I speak, that my words aren't hollow. My words actually have meaning. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think the impact is that you live in that place of authority. Like I ain't asking for your opinion on whether or not this stuff works. You know, even like people who may be listening to me now and say, "Oh man, that sounds all good." Like, sure. You can feel what you feel. <laughs> I mean, I'm in year 27 and I'm growing. I'm in year 27 of this journey and I'm growing. You know, mm. I don't see my life or a life without this woman in my life. I don't see my life or a life without God in my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, I don't see, I don't even know how life functions like that. Now, God forbid. <laughs> anything should happen to my my wife and she passed yeah you know what i mean yeah then 
obviously I'll have to figure out what life looks like without her. But, but as for now, you know, but that ain't never going to, life without her ain't never going to be like me stepping away. Like, like what for, man? Like, like what for? Like, seriously, what for? You mm. know, that's it. You know, I, I love, I, I can love, I can learn to love human beings better because I've figured out how to be vulnerable in this space here. You know what I mean? And as husbands, we do the same stuff that we do. We, you know, we'll discuss things with our friends that we won't discuss with our wives. You know what I mean? I'm the same way. I, you know, my best friend, you know, and, you know, I'll talk it over, you know, or my wife will be telling me something and she'd been telling me it for a minute. And then I'll talk with my best friend, D, and then I'll go back and i say, you know, babe, I was talking with D and blah, blah, blah. And she'll look at me like, And then I'll be like, yeah, I know you said that, man. I know you said that. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's not that I needed a second opinion. I was just, I was talking to D and he said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, and it's just remembering to trust that like, yeah, that she sleeps and wakes with you. You know, she knows you like no one else knows you. She sleeps and wakes with you, you know what I mean? When you're broken down, you know, that's where you break down. That's where you break down, you know? So, yeah, man, it's, <laughs> you, know, you know, it's hard work, you know what I mean? I'm not making it sound like, sure, it's hard work, brother. It's hard work, um, but it's life work, sure. You know what I mean? It's not drudgery. It's not drudgery hard work. But you don't get it for free. You don't get it for free. Love worth, happen love worth having ain't, don't ever come free. Love worth, you know, you know. There's that old um, Rare Groove by, um, that, um, by the natural, as in natural four. Um, Just let me swim in a caramel ocean. Just I was about to say to you, sing it for me, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but you know, you don't get to swim in that ocean for free, Bridget. You know what I mean? Well, you don't get, you know, the heart there, there, of heart. There, this there's a beauty. When I'm near you. There, there's, there's a beauty. Bad, there's a beauty in. Right? No, 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 bro. You know, you're in your music, man. <laughs> and, and, I, and I know you must have a CD collection in the background somewhere. No, but my CD collection now is. My CD collection is now in the garage. Everything's on iTunes, man. Eddie, Eddie is the original <laughs> radio station. Um, there's a beauty in looking back. Mm. Somebody and... said the shark of life is in the ocean. Is in is 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 in two is is in the ocean too. Yeah, concept. Yeah, the shark of life is in the ocean. You know what I mean? But the shark gets you harder when you're swimming on your jacks. Yeah, the, the, the shark don't know how to fight two swimmers. It's easy with one swimmer, but it don't know how to fight two swimmers in an ocean of love, you know? Yeah. That's a fact, though. That is yeah, a yeah, statistical yeah. Trust fact. Me, that's a fact. You're swimming on your jacks in an ocean of love, you're going to drown, or the sharks are going to get you. Yeah. You know, they're going to get you. And as I was saying that there's a beauty in looking back and seeing where you come from. Mm. you said you could have jumped shit or you know we i guess life can make you think a certain way at times mm. life can trigger thoughts in you that are suicidal although it's not suicide directly it's indirect suicide mm -hmm. in that you don't know what you're about to do mm. and the beauty of of it is that no matter what you went through mm -hmm. Your hindsight has let you see, I held on, mm -hmm. and here I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, not so much here I am is in terms of um, I've arrived, but here I still am. Still am. On, on the journey. I'm still here on this journey, you know. Like I said, man, Yvonne has loved me way past my love by day, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that don't mean that she don't have any faults or she don't have uh, her own struggles. Yeah. Um, but 
I know that I've brought more to the to the table than she's brought, and um, um, and so for me, it's uh, uh, I'm grateful to be loved. I've always said, man, you know, the grace of God and the love of a black woman. That's all a man needs, man. That's all a black man needs, brother. What? Do you know the what? Grace of God and the love of a good black woman. I'm thinking brother. about what you're saying. And you're straight, you know. I'm thinking about what you're saying. <laughs> you're right. Listen, listen. You better hear me on that one. You know what I mean? You know, you know. And 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 I'm not making this as a race thing. No. You know, even though people may say, well, of course you are the moment you said a, a, a strong black woman. Um, I'm just making it that we we have to live within a struggle of, of being othered in whatever culture we find ourselves in. And that's a struggle enough, whether it be blatant or whether it be microaggressions as black men and as black women. And, you know, the, the strength... Um, the strength that comes from knowing that, the strength that comes in loving through that, you know, um, it's it's important. It's important that we get that strength from each other and we keep that strength in each other. You know, I mean, I used to be always, I I used to be always like, you know, no black, you know, for me it's black women only black. You know, what I mean, a, a black man must love only a black woman. You know, yeah. you grow up, and you know, when you grow up, you grow up. You know what I mean? And so now I know the heart knows what it knows and the heart knows when it loves. And to love a human that loves you, to love yeah. a human that loves you is, yeah. is the important thing. You know what I mean? Um, to love a human that loves you. Um, but I, I, I still believe in my mantra. Fair black man, the, the grace of God and the love of a good, strong black woman it will set you straight, you know. But the heart knows what it knows and the heart has to be free to love who it loves. You know, let's be free to love who it loves. You know. What what advice have you got for people who are alone in a marriage? Oof. Don't lose your sense of who you were before you became alone in the marriage. You know what I mean? If you are making yourself alone, if you are making yourself the loner in the family, in that marriage, then figure out why you're doing that. Then figure out why you're doing that. If you are the victim, if, if you are being distanced in your marriage and your, your partner, your spouse, um, you know, um, is the one that is distancing themselves from you, then figure out why it is that you're doing that. You know, um, Shirley Brown in her breakout woman to, I think it was 74 or something, woman to woman album. There's one track um, called It Ain't No Fun. And the hook is, it ain't no fun being in love all by yourself when the one you love loves someone else. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it doesn't have to, be, it doesn't, doesn't always have to be the fact that they love another woman or, or, he loves or she loves another man. Um, um, sometimes it could be just the fact that what they love is their own self and they love their own space and they love their own things and it's making you alone in the marriage. So mm -hmm. my whole thing is if, if, that's, if you're in a relationship where you are alone in that relationship, be honest about why that is. Be honest about why that is. But don't forget who you were before you became alone not in terms of who you were in that person, who mm. you were in yourself, you know what I mean? Because what, what, what being alone in a relationship does, it, it causes you to forget your own value, you know what I mean? Because you place so much of the importance of your value in this person. And so you lose your sense of your own value. And that's the one thing that couples must never lose in a, in a relationship, you know, have, have that sense of importance of the both of you as a couple, but never have it at, at the expense of the importance of who you are as an individual, because it's who you are as an individual that's bringing and adding value to who you are as a couple. So if you're in that space where you're alone, it's, it's going to hurt and it's going to hurt like hell and, and, and it's going to continue to hurt, but you can't lose your sense of your own, your own value 
because you're being distanced by the person that your heart loves um and and be willing um be willing to take that journey be take willing to take that journey of, of figuring it out you can't love somebody that doesn't want to love you back that's an impossible thing because love is mean? the biggest act. huh what do you mean explain that well the one thing that we cannot be forced to do as human beings is love somebody. We can only be forced to fear somebody because love is the deepest and most intentional giving of ourselves that we do as human beings. Love is almost as sacred as the power to choose itself. Seriously, love is equal. You know, the decision to love somebody for me is equal to the power to choose. Both of them are sacred, and you cannot be forced. That's why you can tell somebody, "Oh, I love you, you know, I love you so much, I love you so much." But in your mind, you're like, "I would never love you, man." Yeah, you know what I mean. And so, you cannot love somebody that doesn't. You 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 cannot you cannot truly love somebody that doesn't want to love you back. You know what I mean. And you cannot be loved by somebody that doesn't want to love you back which is probably a better way of saying it. You cannot be loved by somebody that truly doesn't want to love you back, you know? And so you need to figure out, you need to figure out, um, <laughs> looking at Trey, Trey's like, damn, I'm writing that down, that's deep. <laughs> yeah, um, but, and you know, um, we've got, got um, a couple of comments, bro. Yeah, and I see, yeah. I see um, Jay Wong, and I see D, I see D jump on, and they are just brilliant in this space. Mary. Of love and, and, and marriage. You know what I mean? People are asking for advice for singles. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the one thing that we do in our in our Christian community that kills a person's self worth and self value, and it is this: we act like unless you are in a space of relationship, you do not have value, which actually is almost believing like a, 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 a evolutionist in a create in in within a creationist <laughs> um, ideology when God created Adam and God created Eve he created two whole persons yeah. you know what I mean this whole idea of it's not good for man to be alone yeah he's saying yeah it's not good for the man to be alone um, but he didn't create the woman in order to complete the man he created the woman in order to complete creation. Creation was never going to be complete until there were two people. You know what I mean? Because as perfect as he was, he wasn't going to masturbate, it go into the air, and then it just all of a sudden turns into a human being. It was always going to take another human being in order for them to procreate. So God brought two human beings, two whole human beings you know what i mean and covid is teaching us that right now that we are not wired to be alone that's why we're struggling with isolation we're not we're not wired to live this way everybody now knows what it's like for everybody who's in scrubs right now everybody who's in wandsworth right now everybody who's in pentonville right now everybody who's on the rock i'm naming all the places that i was you know, what I mean? you know? Everybody knows what it's like for everybody doing 23 hour a day lockdown now. It's not natural. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like for human beings, you know, and relationships, single singles need to realize you're not single. You're just, you're a, you're a human. We need to even stop that, man. You know, married couples and singles. I'm just like, you're a whole human. And you cannot bring half a human. I remember one time I was in a relationship years ago, years ago. And I was, you know, and I thought she was the one. And I was talking to my mom and she said, what's happening in the relationship? I said, I don't know, mom, I'm bringing, I'm bringing, um, you know. And at the time I used to love Teddy Pendergrass. You know, it's so good loving somebody when, loves, when somebody loves you back. You got a bar, you got a you know, remember his line, it's not 70, 30. It's not 60, 40. We're talking about a 50, 50 love, yeah. So I, I went to my mom and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm bringing 50% and I, I want her to bring her 50%. My mom turned and I said, what kind of stupidness you're talking about? Why are you bringing 50% in the place? You have to bring 100% in there. 
pictures. I was like, all right, Bon Teddy Pendergrass, man. Yeah, yeah. So I matched up my love life. That's the word. That's the word, man. Listen, you know, and so like it's 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 the whole case of you know, let me say this to those of you who, who aren't in a relationship. You are already a whole person. You are all, already a whole person. And I know that pe and, and I know that, you know, you want to feel the significance of being loved. You want to feel the significance of being desired. You want to feel the significance of, of being, you know, somebody drooling when they look at you. You know, somebody texting you at one in the morning. And, and it's just that one, you know, um, I know you want to feel the significance of that. But until you feel the significance of that, you are already a whole person, you know. So don't make, no, don't make nobody, don't make nobody like create a space of something else other than you are already a whole person capable of love, capable of desire, capable of, you know, and you may not have found that one significant person in order to put it into, you know what I mean, or receive it from, you know. But until at such time, you are still. Um, how are we whole when everything around us um, says that we're not? Everything around us is lying. What the, everything around us is lying, Ant. It's lying. It's lying. It's lying. Creation says we're a whole person. Creation says we're a whole person. Jesus says, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. They are whole creation. So I don't, I don't need to be in a relationship in order for that significance and that wholeness to be affirmed. I am already affirmed. And, and we need to just change the language. We need to change the language around that. Otherwise, we're going to have people jumping into relationships. Hey. We're going to have people jumping into to relationships just because they're going to be in it and they're just jumping into fire. fire. I, had, I, had, I had someone talking to me, um, two people talking to me um, as a result of the, the, the sessions we've had. Um, when you get to a certain age... Well, watch him, Macaulay, hold on. Um, you might be saying the same thing that Jay's saying. It's dangerous to be on your own um, so long. So long. Um, I'm starting to love my own space. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it, it is dangerous to be on your own. Um, and, and it is easy to love your own space. Um, but that's a choice you make. Believe what are you me, saying? I truly believe that. What, what, we what are you saying? To be, huh? I don't know. I'm single. I'm 40. Yeah. yeah single, My choice. 40. And, and that's because, you know, and you're saying, well, you can't find, you can't find that right person. You, you just enjoy shopping. You know what I mean? You just enjoy shopping. It's time to check out. <laughs> it's time to it's 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 time to check out. And because I tell you, and I believe this, and I've seen it, I've seen it. Yeah, um, I've I've seen it before. You end up being with somebody, and the person you should have been with, yeah, was the person three relationships ago. You end up ending up with what's left. Like you end up. I'm serious. You should have, you should have, you should have settled down two relationships ago. <laughs> All right. right now, you're panic buying. You know what I mean? It's almost like you know you're panic buying, like COVID right now. You panic buying. Let me just get everything and anything. Toilet paper. Put everything in the basket. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think, I think one of, I think one right. of the things that I think one of the things that um, being on your own does, and and I and I say that from experience, is that it makes you afraid to finally take that journey because you can be single for so long that in the end you you don't trust and you have to be able to trust love is built on it you know what I mean I mean this is the thing if you know somebody deep enough it was easy for me to fall in love because Yvonne was my best friend before she became my girlfriend you know what I mean she was my best friend before she became my girlfriend, you know what I mean? And, and, um, and so, um, you know, and we were best friends in a group of us, you know, but she was just like my party, you know what I mean? And, um, and then she became my girlfriend. And so, so, so what's the power know, of so, friendship? So from, from that, from that perspective, it was easy for me to trust. 
because as my best friend, I realized I saw her heart. I saw her heart and I saw the depth of her heart. And so once it kind of dawned on us that actually, no, we like each other. It's you I like. Um, then it was easy for me to trust, like, no, her hands are safe. Her hands are safe. I can put my heart in that. So, you know, don't choose, you know, love your space, but don't choose to be in your own space forever. You know what I mean? Don't panic by it. But stop shopping, man. Take something off the shelf and check out. Get get out the supermarket, man. Get out the supermarket. That's a very unique word. You know. Yeah. And That's at the same brilliant. time, at the same time, as men especially, we we think that we're in that space of like, yeah, I've got time because there's so many women. The woman that you should be choosing, maybe looking at you and saying, look, I'm here, you know, but I'm only giving you a certain amount of time because you are passing your sell by date with me. You're passing your love by date with me, you know? Yeah. So stop messing around. And then in the end, they're like, no, nah, I, can't, I can't. I can't take you off of the shelf. <laughs> I, mean, I can't take you off of the shelf. I'm out of here. You know what I mean? I'm out of here. So, you know. Yeah. The, the, you, you mentioned friendship. Oh, no, hold on. Hold on, let me go back. No, that's fine, that's fine. When the elders tell you that if you keep picking, you pick, pick, come pick till you pick. <laughs> you pick I'm saying, I've heard it before. <laughs> do you think it's easier for men to stop shopping than is on, I don't know about this question. Do you think it's easier for men to stop shopping than women? Um... No, because men have been in the department store so long. They just, in, in the end, they just, you know. I think, I think we, women have a harder, if, it, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it, talking about just the faith community, women have been in there longer. Um, women have a harder choice because, you know, on, um, you know, on average, you know, there's like, what, six women to every one man in the church? Yeah. You know, so... It's a different shopping experience, right? It's a whole, it's a whole other thing, you know what I mean? And then a, a woman has to, a woman has to do too much in order to show her value to a man who ain't mature enough to see her value. <laughs> you know, and then a man, you know, he may still be living at home with his mum, or he may with his parents, or he may he may have his own thing, but a woman has more. And he's like, no, I need to get more before I can talk to her. Why? You loving her things or are you loving her? <laughs> now, what are you loving? You know, are you, you competing with her things? Or, or are you trying to, you know, win her heart? Or are you trying to win, you know? And so it's, it's yeah, man. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a journey. And, and I feel like it's spaces like this that make us better because it means that we have greater conversations about what it means to love and what it means to be in this space of love and, you know, and what it means for us as men. You know, we've done a bad, we've done a bad job. Of, yeah. We've done a bad job. Yeah. You know, we've done a bad job. You know, we've done a bad job. We, we, we dropped the ball everywhere, you know, on our, on ourselves first, <laughs> definitely on women. Um, yeah. Well, that, that and now we, don't know, we, don't know, we don't know how to survive in a world in which, you know, women aren't competing with men, you know. Women are just being who God made them to be in the first place. Because God made two equals. <laughs> if you read the biblical story properly, God made two equal products of him, reflections of himself. When he said, let us make man in our own image, that wasn't like a man. Let us make humanity in our own image. Pause. So God got 20, made pause, pause. Cool reflections. Eddie, our hour's up. I I'm going to restart this live. All right. I'll see you in 10 seconds, yeah? All right, then. Guys, join us in a second. All right, then. All right. Hmm. <laughs> Pastor Eddie is a verbal martial artist, yeah? He, speaking is an art. 
he got this speaking and he's, he, the way he articulates it's it's an art and here he is man's on it man's got it locked black man <laughs> <laughs> This, this was the question I was going to ask you. Are we waiting for them to come back? I think we're going to wait a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a good time to be black, though. I love talking with you, you know. I love talking with you, man. I love talking with you. People are just jumping straight back on with so um, many. This is the fastest it's ever so been. Many. I'm not going to lie. With so many. Um, so wait, what are you looking at? Are you looking at what are you looking at right somebody now? Somebody says, oh, Gus, somebody said, uh, life works at home. Is pride the problem? Uh, I don't think pride is the problem. I think education is the problem. You know, society teaches that indirectly too. You know, uh-huh. I think education is the problem. I think we've just been, we've been educated wrong. We've been educated wrong. Um, you know. Um, yeah. You know. Question. I had, I had, I, Oh no! Carry on, carry on. I'm gonna have it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a, I had a, I have, I have a concept about about love and creation. You know, because obviously I'm, 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 I'm a Christian, so my worldview is shaped by that biblical narrative. You know, and and I see God placing, you know, equal amounts of Himself in two human beings. Um, you know, the depth, like, for instance, the Hebrew is very specific, you know what I mean? So he's, the Hebrew says that for the man, the male, he made him. Yeah. Um, and then the English word for m- when it comes to the woman, and it says he made the woman. The Hebrew word for the woman is built. It doesn't use the same word like man, yeah, he took him out of the mud and he put him together. But the Hebrew word, when when it comes to describing a woman, the word is built. It's translated built. Like so we made the man and he built the woman, you know, which which speaks to the depth and the complexity literally of a woman's body. Like literally of a woman's body. And you see that so much when a woman gets pregnant what becomes what her body turns into this incubator that her body turns into and then when she comes to have that child when she came you know when when our wives came to to have our children like the way her hip detaches (laughs) detaches in order for the birth canal and the baby's born and then it reattaches so like i mean there's a depth of there's a depth to men and there's a depth to women, you know what I mean? Um, 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 there's a depth to men and there's a depth to women that is reflected in creation. There's a depth to it. Now, once this whole phenomenon, um, whatever word you want to use for it, I call it phenomenon of sin kicked in. Yeah, we automatically, we were not only just at war with God, you could see it. We became directly at war with each other. You know, when a man is created, this is bone of my bone. This is flesh of my flesh. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to call her Eve. God never called her Eve. Adam called her Eve. When you read the biblical text, God called her Adam, which means humanity. God called both of them Adam. You know what I mean? And then the ad- name Adam as a name stuck with him. You know what I mean? As, as the male. After this phenomenon comes in and God comes to them in the garden, what do they become? They become fearful, hiding, and self-preservationists. Hey, Adam, what do you do? Child, this woman, this woman that you, you give, gave me. Hold on, a moment ago, she was born of your bone, flesh of my flesh. All of a sudden, she just turned into this woman. Eve, what happened? Oh, it's the snake, man. It's the snake, the snake you make. So both of them are projecting and, and self-preservationists. So Adam, it's the woman's fault. For Eve, it's the snake's fault, saying, it's your fault. What do you make this snake for? You know what I mean? And then you see it displayed in, you know what I mean? You see it displayed, you know, um, in the way they are with each other. You know, God never gave 
when when God said to Eve, your desire will be to this woman, to this man. God was basically saying, because of how the parts of me that are put in him, because of the parts of me that are put in him, this man will dominate you now. He will forever physically dominate you and rule the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything you want to do is going to have to go through him. You are not going to be that independent person that I've created you to be. You know what I mean? And, 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 and literally, that's what you see the world that we live in today. How does a man dominate a woman? A man dominates a woman physically, physically. and he dominates her emotionally. Yeah. And how does a woman dominate a man? A woman dominates a man mentally, and she dominates a man sexually. Actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. And yeah. literally, that's how we move through the world. That's how mm -hmm. we move through the world, you know. Anyway, should couples who no longer love each other still stay together um, for their kids? Um, or should they part whilst still supporting the kids and respect one another? Wow, man, that's, that's always a hard one. That's always a hard one. Um, kids know that they're loved by their parents, but yeah. kids know when parents don't love each other. Absolutely. And, and sometimes that's even harder to see, especially if kids see, I've seen you move from a place of loving, being in each other's space, being all over each other, loving each other, to that space where you are two strangers in that space. That becomes debilitating for kids. It, it means that you've taken away a boundary around them you've taken away a boundary around them that you can't afford to be around them. You know what I mean? You cannot, you cannot afford to take away. Um, so I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a clear cut answer to that question. Huh? I don't think there is a clear cut answer to that question. No, 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 no. I think, I think there are to take, yeah. that one dot to make sure that they safeguard the emotional mental state of their children. Of, of, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think it's important that you do that. You know what I mean? I, I, I think it's important that you do that. Um, and stop making it about you. Yeah, because at that stage, it's about your children. That's right. You know what I mean? At that stage, it's yeah. about your children. You know, and then stop using your children as pawns once everything mash up. Oh, you yeah. don't want to be with me? Well, you ain't going to see your child. Come on now, man. That, uh, that is a topic, you know? Yeah. Please don't... Anyway, please don't <laughs> please don't please don't let that be me seriously I can't take that I can't take that no. I can't no. take that I can't take that yeah question <laughs> what does a man need to be um, you are speaking to both married and, and those who are not married what does a man need to be um, I feel like a man needs to be self honest Self honest, yeah, 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 you know, not just honest about what's taking place around him, but honest about what's taking place inside him, you know. I, 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 I do these um leadership and leadership development um courses and and leadership training, and so I always ask the four questions who am I, how am I? how do I, why and where do I? And I feel like every man should ask him that question. Like, number one, who are you? Just in terms of your identity and, and the space, person that you are at this space that you find yourself in your life, who are you? Who have you grown into? Who are you, who you, who are you exhibiting right now? So who are you? Second question you have to ask, a man should have, ask himself is, how are you? Like emotionally doing, how are you? You yeah. know, spiritually yeah. doing. How are you? Yeah. You know, and don't be afraid and, and allow that honesty to begin there. Um, um, you know, so who am I? How am I? How do I? And that's about leadership and living your life. How do you do that? You know, in this space that you find yourself now, this COVID space, how do you live? You know what I mean? In this space where now you're locked in with your partner and you're locked in with your children and now they're having to see you and you're having to navigate what it means to actually be present, not just be there, actually be present, you know? Um, you know, how do I, you know, in terms of leadership, how do I self-leading, 
family leading, people leading. Um, and then the, the last question is why and where do I? And that has to do with mentoring and legacy. You have to be pouring yourself into somebody. And I believe you have to be doing that as a wow. human in order to wow. live your best life. But um, I believe as a man, you need to be doing that. I feel it's a selfish existence that if you live and learn and grow and develop and don't pour that into somebody else. No, you are not living. Back, and, and, you're, and you're chatting about hashtag living my best life. No, sir. You're living no. a life, but no. you ain't living your best life. No, no. You know what I mean? Because legacy ain't going to be what people say about us. It ain't going to be about what people only. Legacy mm. ain't only going to be about what people say about us. True legacy is going to be the things they say, but it's also going to be your doings that they do. Um, have you written any books, Eddie? Um, yeah. <laughs> Come on, get them up, bro. <laughs> um, this book here, Living From Here. Um, this is uh, this is my second book. Um, the first book was a book of quotes. Um, if you go to my, let me put it up here. Um, you must are they on Amazon as well? Nah, I, I'm not giving Amazon my stuff. Um, <laughs> um, the man's rich enough as it is. Um, uh, Ltd. Um, Ey, I'm going to put it up here. Um, yeah. Ey. Uh, uh, why, why, am I, why am I doing this to myself, man? Just put them on, Ed. E Y R L T D dot um, com. <laughs> dot com. You go to there. E Y R L T D dot com. You'll be able to. Um, okay. Go to the resources section. You'll be able to see the book. Um, yeah, this is, and it's a book that I actually wrote on, on resilience. It, it's actually about resilience. And how we find a hair to live from. So, um, yeah, I, I I I enjoy the work. I enjoyed this work. I poured I poured a lot into it. Um, I feel that you might enjoy it, including the typos, um, because life is like that. There are typos in conversations, so why not have typos in books? You know, make sure. Question. That you're like, hold on, is that is that a typo? You know, it's almost like, what did he say? Pin your question, or this is marriage. Question, or this question. is marriage. Should pin the question. I don't even know what you're talking about, but what oh. I will do is I will take the link and put it up onto oh, a post. Have you written a book? Have you written a book? Yeah. Thanks, Jay. Jay just said book gave me a whole new perspective on life. No joke. Thanks, Jay. I appreciate you, bro. You know. And for those of you who really want a, a, a coach, a life coach and especially a health and fitness coach, the Power Wave Movement, Coach Coach Leville is uh, on here. Serious. Go check out his work. Check out what he's doing. His stuff right now for you in your space of isolation. Perfect. 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 Bro, you got a question. How did you guys, oh, we, I think we, we have a question. How did you find your purpose? How do we find our purpose? Um, I think I, this is going to sound really, this is going to sound really corny. Um, but for me, it's so true. I feel like my purpose found me. I feel like my purpose found me. Um, I put myself in a space of, of being able to develop myself. So I went to, you know, I knew that I needed to be educated again. So I went, to, I went back to university. Um, I felt that call on my life for, for ministry. Um, and I feel like in order to find purpose, you have to, you know, you have to, purpose is found in doing stuff bigger than you. I'm serious. Purpose is found in doing stuff bigger than you about more than just you. Purpose is found in the way in which you want to develop somebody else's life. That's what I love. And I'm going to use him as a perfect example. That's what I love about Coach Ville. He was at a space in his life, and his story is so powerful. He was at a space in his life when he was literally done with life. Like, literally with life, done. And he literally saw something on TV. And what brought him back was realizing 
actually, this moment ain't even about me. Where I find myself, this moment ain't even about me. This moment is about something bigger than me and people. It is about people. My life, I've made my whole life in this whole moment about me, you know. And, and, and I think, seriously, I'm going to go to Jesus Christ because I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a man of faith. Jesus says, for those of you who seek to keep your life, you will lose your life. But those who seek to lose your life, you will find your life. And he was saying, for those who seek to keep your life in a space of selfishness, where your life is only about you, you're going to lose your life. You're going to lose the meaning and purpose in life. But for those of you who are willing to lose yourself in something bigger than you, for those of you who are willing to make your life about just more than your space and your needs and your hurt and, and your, your wants, you're going to find your life. And so for me, I feel, and that's why I say, I feel like my purpose found me. Um, my ability, the, the gift that God has given me is the ability to to communicate and to use words definitely and um and to take big ideas and put them into small spaces um i feel like that's the gift that he's given me and and i think the other gift he's given me is um i'm, I'm feeling like people are able to trust my words because I do believe that transparency is a gift that he's given me, you know, and, and I don't sit easy in it, but I just don't know any other way to live. So I'll just live in just this space. Um, and I, and I feel like it's something that people feel comfortable around. So if I say something, they'll journey with it just to see where it goes. Even if they journey with it to say, nah, not for me, <laughs> they will sit in it and and so I think now that it's put itself in a space of um, ministry, now that it's put itself in a space of professional development, now that it's put itself in a space of actually connecting with people's lives and helping people to join um, their life to something more than just themselves, have a deeper sense of who they are, but move outside of themselves to join that sense of who they are with somebody else. So I feel like, for me, finding purpose is about finding, finding, seeking to connect your life to something more than just you, than your purpose. Allow it to be, um, um, allow it to be about, allow it to be um, about how your neighbor's doing, how somebody else is going to be developed. Allow it to be about this thing that I've learned, how do I share it? That's why I did you know, the gold vid flow vid challenge that I'm doing. And today is the last day. Today I record episode 19. And because I figured like COVID has stopped our lives, but life continues. We still get up. We still go to sleep. We still have to deal with our kids. We still have to deal with ourselves. We still have to deal with our isolation. So life goes on. Life is still flowing on. So I was like, all right, well, in, in, in challenge of gold vid, COVID-19, you know, I said, all right, well, I'm going to do something for the next 19 days and I'm going to hashtag it COVID and Flovid <laughs> because life goes on and life flows on. And, and so that's why I did, you know, I said, do something, anything that will inspire somebody, help somebody, make somebody smile, make somebody laugh, make somebody think, whatever it may be, and do it for 19 days straight and post it and just post it. You know, I'm in this space, but I'm not going to be in this space of isolation alone. I'm going to be in this space and I'm going to do something that reaches beyond me into a wider space, you know. And so that's why I started the, why I started it. And yeah, yesterday was 18. Today is 19. You know, today is 19. Um, and I'm going to continue with, with what I do. But, you know, I think my purpose found me and my purpose... And I feel like if we're willing to be outside of ourselves, like look for purpose outside of ourselves, then we'll find deep purpose because that's the way we're wired. And that was a very long answer to a very short and concise question. Thank you, Nita Pal. <laughs> what, when it comes to myself, 
mm-hmm. um, the notion of purpose is an is somewhat abstract um, and it's partly because of the way my brain is wired mm-hmm. uh, i've someone asked me that I can only interpret and say I can do anything almost mm-hmm. um, that's not because I'm brave it's not because I'm clever Mm-hmm. Um, it's because anything that I put my hand to is either failed or survived because it depended on how I've embraced the fear in my life. Mm-hmm. So fear was a major player in me doing a lot of things back in the day. Mm-hmm. And it's only over the last few years I've learned to live with fear. Anyone could do this, you know. Yeah. And, um, and I've seen your growth. I've seen your growth over the years. So I know well, what this kind of, is, yeah. But this, this is it. It's like, I would never do this. I would never, I was, there was a, I got a, one of my partners who I worked with yeah. um, in this was convincing me for six months to hit the camera. And I said, no way. Yeah. yeah you know my history. The certain things happened to me. I didn't want to go on camera. Mm-hmm. So, so, so here I am on camera in fear, but doing it anyway, in courage. So when you ask me about my purpose, what I have in my hand, I'm just using it to help people. Mm. Mm. Anybody could do it. And I learned a few things like, just be consistent and serve people. Mm. Mm. I didn't get a message. I didn't get a whisper. And I haven't had anyone prophesy on me. Mm. I'm just doing what I can do. Mm-hmm. I've got it in my hand. I've got a camera in my hand. I've got a camera somewhere around here. I just knew what I could do. Mm-hmm. I'm loving it because I know what I'm good at and everything that I'm good at, I'm working on. Mm-hmm. But what, it's like I said to my son today because he's trying, he's on Google trying to research something. I said to him, don't go to Google, son. <laughs> go to the website they told you to go to. Um, then he started to do stop motion. You know what I mean by stop motion? Yeah. He's working mm-hmm. on stop motion. And I said to him, there's too many clips missing. I said to him, why don't you do a simple movement using more clips as opposed to doing all this action and I don't even know what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. I said to him, do one thing well, mate. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot of things, you've got a lot of pie, fingers in different mm-hmm. pies. Do you mm-hmm. just do one thing well? And that's what I'm doing here. Mm-hmm. No, that's you're doing well. I mean, I, 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 and it's know, just a platform. Saw... It's not talent. It's not talent. I'm just, it's just a platform. No, 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 no. I saw... Um, so Moody asked the question, how do you stay focused on your purpose? I think you stay focused on your purpose um, simply by doing like what you see um, Kurt is talking about. Don't look at your purpose as a project. Your purpose isn't a project. Your purpose is who you are. No, this is what I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there are days in which you ain't going to be focused on it, yeah. but you're going to get back to it because that's what you do. That's who you are. It's literally wired into your DNA. And you've got to stop seeing it, you know. You see everything from this kind of Western space, like this is this, this is that, that is that. No, it's the whole thing in one space. It's the whole one, you know, don't compartmentalize purpose. Your purpose is who you are. It, it, it's, just, it's just who you are, you know what I mean? So yeah. there'll be times when I'm just like, ah, oh, child, man. I don't want to write nothing. I don't want to create content. I don't want to put nothing out there. But you will. And then, and, and then I won't. Like, literally a whole week. And then I get up and I'm like, what are you yeah, talking about, man? That's who you yeah. are. You can't even breathe right yeah, now, man. Yeah, you can't even breathe. Yeah, write right? something and put it out. And then that's what, yeah. And then I get back to doing it. Why? Because it's who I am. You know, yeah. don't, your purpose isn't a project. Your purpose isn't a project. And, and, and if you remember that, then you're always going to find yourself doing what you do. You know, I remember I heard coach, coach Bill say the same thing the other day. He said, um, I get up at five o'clock every morning. Um, and he said, because that, that's actually what I do. That's who I am. That's who I am. I've, I've made it yeah. not just a yeah. habit. I've made it like, this is who this I is am. This is who I am. Different. Yeah, this is who I am. I, I rise at five every morning. I train, I do this. I've made these habits almost like just wired into my whole framework for how yeah. I live, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it sets me, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful just listening to, I was just like, child, love this guy, man. It's inspiration, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Love this guy, you know? So like, yeah, 
it's you know you're a good interviewer you give people time to answer their question to answer your question no matter how long they take you don't interrupt you know what I mean? do you know what's interesting though cool. do you know what's interesting? when you and i had a chat about this last night and today this platform is about not about us there's a very little that we say mm-hmm. about we we interject here and there but it's about the person we're talking to because we recognize Look, the, the, the straight truth is I'm actually comfortable in saying that I know a lot and I know nothing. Mm. <laughs> but most of the people well, the I speak to... The more you know, the more you realise you don't know. I don't know. And, mm. and most of the people I speak to, when I say, come, come join me on a live, they're like, what, what am I going to say? And I'm like, I'm calling you because you know more than me. Mm. How long have you been married? Two years. Yeah, you know more than me. Trust me. Mm. You're... Mm. <laughs> um, so this platform is for people to, for me, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a secret. We set this up. I set this up, actually. I set this up. It started with a Facebook Live four years ago. Mm-hmm. Just by chance, that's how it started, right? When it weren't up for it, I said, no, let's give it a shot. I wasn't up for it. Let's give it a shot. Mm-hmm. We, I set this up and, and kept it rolling to teach me how to be a better husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this, was ther- your, yeah, this is therapy for you then? Bro, <laughs> it's free. <laughs> My yeah. counsellors are around the corner and they're all the way in Australia. <laughs> and you get them for free. You get them out of their bed at 5.30 in the morning. You know? Sorry, man. I'm so hey, sorry, bro. but you know, well, I've got to do, I've got to do. <laughs> But you understand, like, this is about, I, I did this for me, and I know, this is me, hold on a minute. I'm getting something out of this, and they're getting something out of this. Yeah. Therapy, I'm telling you, Harriet. Yeah. And Harriet's helping me next, uh, in a couple of weeks as well, so this is going to be good. But, Eddie, um, we'll be meeting again. Yeah, man. Uh, we be, will. Before you go, I want you to give us a couple of tips. Mm-hmm. Tell me who you're talking to and give us a tip. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a tip, yeah? And I'm talking to everyone, everyone who's listening to this. Okay. Um, and, if, and, and I'm, you're listening to this because you're actually journeying through life and you want your story as you connect it in marriage, as you connect it in life, as you connect it with people, um, you want it to have meaning. Yeah, so I'm going to read you the opening statement from my book. (laughs) Yeah? Let me read it, and this is going to be it. Um, 14 years ago, I wrote these words. There is a story in each one of us written on the pages of our lives in the ink of experience. Each new day brings a new chapter, each turning point in our 24 hours, a new sentence. The sad thing is we rarely see the power of our stories. We seldom realize how much they shape and change the worlds in which each is shaped. We find our stories intentionally and accidentally as we go on life's journeys, whichever way we find them, Doing so means finding our place and purpose in life. Finding our story is finding that deferred dream that lays dormant within. Finding our story is discovering where all the old sagas and the new dramas come together, where the present light and past shadows form a picture that finally makes sense. When we can sit and look over our past accumulated chapters, seeing where they've brought us and appreciating the things they've taught us when we can understand that we are dynamic co-writers and editors of our stories and that our stories were written to have meaning in the life of another then we have found ourselves our place and our story so i mean if i'm going to say anything to any one of you it's understand that everything that you've been through in your life is purposed you know um and when i say purpose it has meaning to it meaning can be found from it 
you know, sometimes even if that meaning is you need to leave this alone and move on, there is nothing to find here. <laughs> that is finding meaning and that is finding depth. And, yeah. um, and I want to say to you that your story is important because your story um, is your life. When you share your story, you're sharing your life. And um, so sit down and think about your story. Sit down and think about your journey. Sit down and think about the chapters that you've written so far. Um, sit down and think about that. Um, and then once you've done that, um, understand that that is now written to have meaning in somebody else's life, not just your life. Um, you're sharing your learning, you're sharing your best, you know? So yeah, that, that, that's me, that's me. <laughs> that's me that's what i'm sure thank you for having me you know um you can you can find out more about me at eyr limited eyrltd.com you can find my book there and other resources that that i have there and you can find out a bit more about me um from a professional point of view um and then anything else you need to know, just go to my social media. I kind of post up my life in that space, you know. But EYRLTD.com. Um, I'm going to put back up my EddieHippolyte.com. Um, I took it down because I didn't like it. Um, I didn't like what it was doing. So. Eddie Hippolyte works for me. <laughs> it works for me. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it back up. You know, it's just down <laughs> at the moment. You know, I'm going to put it back we're going to see you on, oh my gosh, before I go there, um, when you talk, I have to listen. Um, we haven't spoken enough, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 you're there, especially with Juanita, you're there and you are the equivalent to dad, strong, big brother. Mm. Well, the line you know, she's like daughter, little sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, appreciate it. And um, actually, <laughs> there's one thing you said. We came to your house for dinner. <laughs> that time we came to your house for dinner. Interesting time. And one thing that really um, resonated with me, you said, you said, if you ain't been married 10 years, you ain't married. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember saying that? Seriously. Or if you ain't been married 10 years, up. yeah, I don't want to hear no advice from you. <laughs> you know. I get it. I get it. I you just, get it now, don't you? You get it now. I, listen, but I was married um, about 12, 13 years then. How long have you been out there now? Seven years. About 13 years, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and, I, and when you said it, I instantly knew. Yeah. Um, but but people keep pushing, man. People keep pushing. I mean, there's something beyond the horizon. Yeah. You know, and we can only yeah. see so far. Yeah, yeah. And, and Eddie, you've helped people to understand that there is much more over the horizon. It's an inspiration. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We we will um we'll see you on the twenty fifth, Saturday the twenty fifth. That's that next week. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine AM, not PM, nine AM because we are working with the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. And the both of us are gonna be together, you know what I mean? So you, fun. Yvonne, maybe a bit of Rhea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She can expose you a little bit. Uh, and man. and um No man, you know you know Yvonne keeps my stuff tight. She, you tell her tight. When it is not as tight, man, she's going to let it out. <laughs> she's going to let it out. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I'm, you're still going to, you're going to save us, man. I mean, literally, look, let me put it out there whilst I'm on a roll. People <laughs> come on, they're saving lives. You know that? No, I believe it. I honestly believe it. I love what you and Monita are doing here. I truly love what you and Monita are doing here. It's, you know, I've, I've, I've tuned in over... How many years are you doing this now? Four. Yeah. And, yeah. and I've heard levels of conversation. I'm like, whoa. Mm. Whoa, man, this is serious. Ed, you, you know, know what? I mean? Taking that leap to put stuff out there, I'm private, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I recognize if I stay this private. Yeah. But this is what you do. 
mm. which is brilliant. You share story, not business. Yeah. That's what you do, and you do it well. No matter how depth, no matter how deep the stories are, you're actually sharing your story. I'm not. I'm not sharing my business. I'm sharing my story here. And, and that's what people need. People don't need to know the people business. No. They just need to know, they need to know their story. They need to know, you know, here's the scar. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, and I'll tell you the story about the scar, but I ain't yeah. gonna tell you my business about this scar. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's a beautiful thing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Looking forward yeah. to being with you on the 25th. That'll actually be our wedding anniversary. Yeah. How many years? 27. Yeah. 27. 27. You have to understand, Eddie got <laughs> married when I was, I was telling Eddie, <laughs> I'm going to bring it up again. You got married when I was wearing my dad's clothes to church, and my dad was twice the size of me. We were sharing 36 you inch you inches of a 20 foot waist. You got to church with them baggy Bobby Brown clothes on, man. You know, PDJ Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, what, listen, man, when I wore a belt, that trousers wrapped around. Wrap around half around my waist again. No joke. Those are the days, man. That's uh, where you, you got married. <laughs> and it was inspirational mm. because I always was looking for examples. <laughs> <MC Hammer. laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good. If, you know, believe me, I remember when, actually, we'll probably talk about it when, when, yeah. Um, when, yeah. when we have the thing. But I remember when Monita first mentioned you, and um, to see to see you then, and to see you now, yeah, you you are inspirational, brother. Wow, you are inspirational. You know, you know, Yvonne, Yvonne loved you the way I love um, Monita. Oh so man! In, in our, I'll tell you this privately. Yvonne loved you the way I love Monita. So in both of our minds, it was like, we were both like looking at each of you, you know, I'm looking at you, Yvonne's looking at Winnie, I'm like, my son, my daughter. Oh, <laughs> man. So, oh, so, man. So you were always going to do well. You set us up for Saturday, bro. <laughs> That's deep what you said, man. Serious. We were both looking at you because you know what Juanita was to me, you know what mm. I mean? And you were the same to Yvonne. You know, so, you know, I was like clutching my daughter. Everyone was clutching her son. And he was like, mm, okay then, you know. And so you were always going to do well. Because for us to relinquish that mentally and emotionally, yeah, we knew that you were both loving into good spaces, you know. And, you know, like us, you, you've just taken your journey. You know, you're taking your journey, you're taking your knocks, you've been through your ups and your downs, your highs and your lows. But here you are. This is Marriage UK. Yes, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> Here you are. Bro. Here you are. This is marriage you know what I mean? Um, I'm gonna put on my makeup for Saturday morning, bro. Um, next Saturday, <laughs> Saturday 25th, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna fix up. Nine. Man. I'm gonna fix up. Yeah, yeah. After, you know, I have to take that shave. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna shave. You, you have to. You know, I'm gonna. I, you know, I wanna come on like I have some kind of wisdom. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh man, appreciate it. Listen, um, let me leave you to it. What's the time? I don't even know. Okay. The time okay. here is 10 past 7. Yeah. yeah, so it's early for you. So, yeah, guys, we're seeing Eddie and his wife. They're sharing, they're honouring us so massively by sharing their anniversary with us on Saturday the 25th at 9am. Mm -hmm. Be mm -hmm. there and learn from this. <laughs> um, please, it's going to be fruitful. Thank you, bro. Say hello for me. I will contact I will do. myself. I will do. I will do. I will do. I will do. Most definitely. Yeah, I, will do. I will do. God bless you, man. And you too, man. Take care. I will do. Yeah. Take care, buddy. Love you. Take care. Y'all. It's deep, man. We, we have stories beyond that which we can tell you um, on, this, on this channel. Um, yeah, we're learning. I'm scanning through some of your uh, last comments here. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, we're sharing, man. It has been an edifying week. And believe me, it is um, XXSDXX. I don't know what to call you, but that. Um, it has been an edifying week. It's been a crazy week for us. And again, I say this 
free counsel in a way, but it's, it's, it's on another level. I mean, this has never been, and although I don't have a massive following, ah, oh, this is what I want to say. If anybody knows how to, for free, <laughs> okay, help us with um, marketing, let us know how you can help us. We are limited in our skill set. Um, we have three children. I'm a social worker when it is a social, um, what's in, you know, we both work in youth offending and life, do you know what I mean? And we are, you know, we are not all favored with Mark. If you can help, let us know, message us, DM us how you can help support us. Uh, we're not looking for money. We're just looking for advice and support and guidance and, and help, literal, literal help. So please uh, do that. Excuse the sniffing. Um, thought provoking thank you um harriet um this is marriage uk is edified through the speakers give praise for that platform yes man i'm telling you the people that come i mean i mean i i honestly don't always know what to expect we take a risk with everybody and i say that in a oh wow it's nothing against them it's just um a lot of people who come don't realize how much they have to give and I have to convince them that they have a lot to give. Um, so that's a part of the job. So I have to make calls, make appointments and hope they turn up because they don't always. Um, you wait, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand wave, I'm waving at you. This platform allows for so much growth. People, live this thing, man. Listen to me. I, you know what? I, yeah, I used to preach i hate preaching i prefer teaching i'm a teacher really and i used to preach this thing live and i say it to my kids live the little that you know if it's if forgiveness is something that you know and you struggle with it that's what you focus on live the little that you know don't try to live the whole thing don't try to live the whole of christianity live something well that you know and master that thing and move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. If it's forgiveness, if it's pride, work on that thing. I'm teaching my kids this, yeah? Don't try to be the whole shebang. Take your time. Um, yes, it's, we, that's right. So when we speak to, oops, when we speak to people, I'll just let you know, this is like background, you know, you're behind the scenes now. When we speak, to, when I speak to people about coming on, we are careful that we we don't want to expose other people's partners or pe things that must keep their still keep themselves safe. Don't tell us everything, and they are doing it so well. Story, not business. Word, not your business. Yeah, man. Um, so, if any way that you know you can help, please DM MC Hammer. Don't laugh at me, MC Hammer. Coach Coach Laville is he on? Man, you were the guy that they were bigging up. How you doing, sir? MC Hammer trousers were in at one point, okay? But I had no choice, you know what I'm saying? Uh, welcome, Coach Laville. Coach Laville, you're being spoken about. Please hook up with Coach Laville. Um, good foundation, yeah, man. Happy anniversary in advance. See you then, um, sister. Nine o'clock on the 25th. It's real. Pleasure to be in a space with you, King Kurt. Oh. King Kurt, lovely, he's living from here. Thank you so much. And Juanita as well. Note taken. Uh, pleasure to be in this space with you. Okay, I'll read that again. It will, it, I will, you will be out there for, I don't know what you said, but you're laughing at me or smiling. X, X, S, D, X, X. Listen people, thank you so much. God bless you all. And that's it for this week. We will see you Mon Monday? Monday. We're done for the week. It's Monday now. We've got four sessions booked for next week. It's going to be deep. It's going to be deep.